Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at 10 things I hate about Windows 11, and which is what a lot of people are probably talking about in the comments of my videos. The first one is stringent hardware requirements. Windows 11 has raised the bar for system specifications, particularly with CPU and TPM 2.0 requirements, effectively uh, locking out a lot of older computers from upgrading. This can be a significant barrier for users with older hardware. Now, some people claim that their PC is still good enough for what they need it to do, and unfortunately, they now can't upgrade that PC to uh, Windows 11 because of these strict hardware requirements. A lot of these users are feeling that Microsoft are forcing them to buy a brand new computer, and also a lot of these computers are going to end up in landfill, millions of them, and that is a big problem for the planet. So that is one of the first problems I have with Windows 11. Let's move on to number two, which is forced uh, Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge is a part of Windows, but Windows 11 pushes users towards Microsoft Edge, making it difficult to set out other browsers as a default browser. Also, they are forcing you to keep it on the system, unless you live in the EU, of course, where you get the privilege of being able to uninstall it. But people that live elsewhere in the world are forced to have this on the system, and it is literally a data collecting hog. I've shown videos where Microsoft Edge is calling home all the time with telemetry. So that is one reason why I don't like it. Next up is BitLocker. BitLocker uh, is a device encryption tool that is built into Windows, which is automatically enabled when you sign in with a Microsoft account or when you're on a Azure Active Directory account during the setup process of Windows 11. Now, BitLocker might be a great a security feature to protect you by encrypting all your data. But when you're in your 70s and you haven't got a clue what BitLocker is and it's automatically enabled by default and then you forget your key and you can't gain access to your data, this can be an absolute nightmare for people. And it just doesn't mean older people. It could be anyone who's not tech savvy. And this is why BitLocker can be a major problem for a lot of people. And that's why I don't think it should be forced on people automatically. I can see the security side of it, but there's also a risk element as well. Next up is the Microsoft account. This is something that is being forced on people uh, recently, and it's getting very difficult to bypass it. There is methods to be able to bypass it still to sign into a local account, but Microsoft are now making it super difficult to be able to bypass it. There is still one method you can use which works perfectly fine. And of course, if you do set up a Microsoft account for your Windows system, this also automatically sets up BitLocker and this also automatically sets up OneDrive which starts backing up all your data to the cloud. And a lot of people don't even know this is happening. So making people use a Microsoft account is a big no-no. They should give people a choice rather than forcing people to use a Microsoft account. This is also a nightmare for PC repair shops uh, where they're forced to use Microsoft accounts during the setup process and things like that. So it's not a great idea from Microsoft and it's a one that's gone down like a lead balloon. Next up is the controversial recall in Windows 11 is an AI powered feature designed to help users easily find and revisit past activities on their PC. It works by taking snapshots of the screen periodically. Then users can search through specific content or browse through the visual timeline for their posted uh, activity. Recall is an opt in feature and users have control over whether they want to use it or not. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like Windows Recall and they want it off the system. At the moment, you have to have a Copilot Plus PC. Next up, it's Copilot itself. Copilot in Windows 11 is an AI assistant designed to help users with various tasks uh, from productivity and creativity to education and knowledge access. It can be accessed through the taskbar, through the start menu, and through dedicated Copilot keys on your keyboard. It also is part of your PC. It's built into just about everything, your browser, your notepad, you know, paint. It's embedded everywhere. And a lot of people uh, don't like it, and some people do like it. So it just depends on whether you're one of those people that like this 
AI built into your operating system. I don't particularly need, uh, you know, Copilot in Notepad. Copilot can answer all your questions, generate images, summarize information, and also even guide you through tasks. And it can even write code for you. So it's a very powerful tool. And some people love the AI integration into Windows, but a majority of people just simply don't want it. And of course, it's becoming more and more difficult to remove it. Even AI is in Outlook. It's everywhere. They're embedding it in every part of Windows 11. And I think 25H2 is going to be even worse. Next up is the dreaded telemetry that Microsoft love to collect through diagnostic data to improve your operating system and related services. And also this type of data is being harvested while you use your computer. They say it's to enhance user experience and some users prefer to disable it due to its privacy concerns or potential performance impacts. I've made videos on this where you have to go through and disable a bunch of this stuff because you can see a lot of information leaving your computer and calling home to Microsoft. Now, it's probably going to be impossible to completely disable all of the telemetry in Windows 11 because it's probably hard coded into the core operating system, which is locked down. But it does call home quite a lot and it uses uh, applications like Copilot, uh, Cortana is using things like your Edge browser and other Microsoft applications that are installed on the system. If you do searches on your PC, that automatically gets called home to Microsoft. So there's quite a bit being sent out and it's quite a concerning thing for a lot of people. But you can turn a lot of it off, but you just have to jump through quite a few hoops to do it. Next up is all of the apps pre-bloated into the system. Bloatware is a major problem with Windows 11, and all these pre-installed apps are often unwanted software that comes with the operating system or it's pre-installed on a new computer. These programs can consume a lot of system resources, impact performance, and some even collect user data. Removing bloatware can lead to a faster, cleaner, and more efficient computer, but it just means you've got to go through and uninstall a lot of these. Now, Microsoft do not allow you to uninstall certain applications, and these are hard bedded into the actual operating system. Unfortunately, for some people, there is ways of removing them, but it can also break the operating system. Next up is the forced updates and bugs that come with Windows 11. Microsoft seemed to release versions of Windows 11 or feature updates or even security updates. Normally when you update the system, it should be plain sailing to fix a lot of known issues with Windows 11, but when they fix one issue, it tends to break five others. And this is a major problem for a lot of people. Things like, uh, you know, your taskbar disappearing, flickering on the screen, uh, maybe you're getting blue screen of death like I was getting or you know, things like that, which is causing major problems for people and they have a lot of issues with updating. And a lot of people then start turning the Windows updates off, which is also very risky. Some people just block feature updates, but a lot of people will then just start, you know, either going back to Windows 10 because it's more stable. A lot of people just want a stable operating system. And unfortunately, Windows 11 24 H2 has not been the most stable operating system, in my honest opinion. So all of your pre-installed apps, your right-click context menu, the interface of Windows 11 is not the best. The start menu is a bit janky. And of course, a lot of people uh, seem to hate by having to go into the operating system and delve deeply in where it used to take one or two clicks to get to that location. They've buried it deep inside the operating system. There's tons of settings in here that you have to go through and turn off manually because they haven't give you an opt-in or an opt-out option to turn everything off. And a lot of this stuff is just, it's like monotonous. You just go through it all the time to turn this off, like your inking and typing and your speech, your, your location, camera, microphone, all the settings here, privacy settings. You have to go through and turn a lot of this stuff off. And it does take a bit of time. This is why we see a lot of programs being created and scripts to do a lot of this for you because people just get tired of having to set all this up every single time. And of course, then there's a feature update and it all gets reset and you have to go through and do it all again. So the interface of Windows 11 is not the best. Now, I'll give you a quick bonus one here. OneDrive is another big problem. 
because basically when you uh, install Windows 11, if you set up a uh, Microsoft account, it will automatically enable OneDrive and this will start uh, syncing to the Microsoft servers. This will start syncing all of your folders, your user profile to Microsoft. This will be all your desktop, your documents, your pictures folder. All of this could be automatically synced to OneDrive cloud storage. You can disable this feature and unlink the PC, but during the installation process, because Microsoft are forcing Microsoft accounts on people, people don't even realize that their hard drive is now encrypted with BitLocker and it's also synced to the Microsoft servers using OneDrive and all your data is being sent to them. And a lot of people don't like it. They want the option or choice uh, to back up all of their data to the cloud. And this could be all of your photos and things like that that you have on the PC. Now, some people might find this a great feature, but other people just don't even know their data has been synced to uh, the cloud. And some people just don't like that idea. Now, don't get me wrong. Windows 11 is the best operating system that Microsoft have released to date. It's the most secure and I can see where they're trying to go with all of the forced Microsoft accounts to make things a lot more secure for you. But unfortunately, there's a lot of, uh, you know, harvesting of information that people just don't like. And of course, recall was a big problem. And now you've got Copilot and a bunch of other stuff, which is what we've gone through in this video. So don't get me wrong. I do like Windows 11. I think it just needs a bit more fettling. Unfortunately, every time they fettle, with Windows 11, it normally breaks things. And of course, people just want a operating system that works. People would rather have a stable operating system rather than a operating system that is buggy and broken. And they're using people like guinea pigs to test all of their updates that they release to the general public. These updates are in the Windows Insider program. And of course, they should be releasing updates that are fully working and bug free but they tend to release them full of bugs. And of course, there's lots of problems that come with it. And this is what causes all the hate with Windows 11. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server. The link is in the video description. Bye for now.